Hey guys, this is part 2 of our introductory tutorial for Magic version 2. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, you should definitely do that first. The link is in the description. And if you have any questions about anything in that video or this one, please visit our forums. The link is also in the description. For this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and add a waveform module like we did in part 1. One thing you might notice is that when a module is added, it automatically gets connected to the closest module on its right side, which in this case is the magic module, here. The magic module is the most important module in magic, because its job is to display all its connected modules in the magic window down here. The black line that connects two modules is called a connector, and you can grab a connector by clicking and dragging it, and when you do so, the connection gets broken temporarily. Now you can see that the waveform module has stopped being displayed in the magic window. If I drag the connector back, the waveform reappears. If I release the mouse button on a connector while it's dragged away, the connector gets removed completely. But for now I'm going to undo that by pressing Ctrl Z or Command Z on Mac, which will get the connector back, because I want to show you the other thing you can do with the connector. You can right click on it and a menu pops up. If I go to the Insert option, I get a menu that is similar to the Add menu we went over before, but the difference is that when I choose a module here, and I'll choose the Scale module, it automatically gets inserted between the Waveform module and the Magic module. This is generally the fastest way to add a new module between two existing ones, but I'll go ahead and undo the Insert to show you that you could also do it just like this. But it doesn't really matter how you do it, because both methods achieve exactly the same thing. As you start to learn magic, you'll find out that there's often more than one way to do something, and you can use whichever way you prefer. Now we have the scale module here, and let's learn about how it works. Right now it doesn't seem to be doing anything because the waveform looks the same as it did before. So let's make it do something by editing it. Each line of a module is called a parameter, and this module has four parameters, x, y, z, and x for all. Let's concentrate on the x parameter. We can change it by clicking on these little arrows here to make the value go up or down, and as I do this, you can see the waveform changing in the magic window. I can also just click in this box to type in a value, like this, or I can change the value by dragging up and down with the mouse. And if I drag while holding down Control or Command on Mac, it will change the value more slowly. Let's make the waveform fill the window by setting it like this. So as you've probably realized by now, the scale module changes the scale, or size, of whatever is connected to its input. When we talk about a module input, we're talking about its left side, here. Since the waveform module is connected to the left side of the scale module, the waveform is what's getting scaled. Because we're changing only the x parameter of the scale module, the waveform is only getting scaled in the x direction, which means the left-right direction. But let's not worry too much about the details right now. Overall, the important thing to know is that pretty much every module has its own set of unique parameters. Not all parameters are number values, some of them are checkboxes, as you can see here in the waveform, and some of them are drop-down boxes, like this, and there are other types as well. You can spend some time playing with them to see how they affect the output in the magic window. I'll click the solid parameter, so you can see how the waveform changes. That's a nice outline effect, but I'll change it back, just because it's easier to see for the rest of this tutorial. Okay, we're going to continue here by adding another module. I'm going to right-click down here and select the image module. The image module draws an image file, and most formats are supported such as JPEG, PNG, GIF, etc. I'll click here in the file parameter to select an image file from my computer. Now you can see that the image is being displayed in the magic window. The reason I added the image module is to show you what happens when more than one module is connected to another module. In this case, the magic module now has another connector coming into it, so another input has been added. The input is called a pin, which is this little round thing here, and pins are important because they let you create a new connector from scratch. If I remove this connector by dragging it away and then letting go of it, I can create it again by clicking and dragging on the empty pin, 
and dragging back over here to the image modules pin on its right side, which is called the output pin. A connector can only connect an output pin to an input pin. It can never connect two input pins together or two output pins together. The other reason pins are important is that they determine the front to back drawing order. Right now in my magic window, you can see that the waveform appears to be in front of the image. This is because the path of connectors coming from the waveform module is connected here on the top pin of the magic module, and the image's connector is below that. I can change the order by grabbing one of the connectors and dragging it to a different pin. Here, the top connector has automatically moved down to make room, and now you can see that in the magic window, the image is in front and it completely covers the waveform. So definitely play around and make sure you understand this concept of the connector and pin order, because it will be a very important aspect of how you construct your visuals. In the rest of this tutorial, I want to go over a couple smaller concepts. The next one is how to disable modules. Disabling modules means that you make them temporarily inactive, and there are two ways to disable modules. They are represented by these buttons here at the top of each module. The green button on the right side is the power button, and the button next to it is the bypass button. When I click the bypass button, this module gets turned off, meaning its effect is no longer being applied. You can see that the waveform size has changed because the scale module is inactive. To turn the scale module back on, I simply click the bypass button again. The power button is very similar to the bypass button because it turns the module off, but it also turns off all modules that are connected to the input. Now you can see that the waveform is also turned off and it has completely disappeared. To bring it back, I just click the power button again. So what's the purpose of disabling modules? Well, this little project I've created is a perfect example of why I might want to do it. If I wanted to look at my waveform without being distracted by the image in the background, I can turn off the image. Or, if I want to look at my image without being distracted by the waveform, I can turn off the waveform. Disabling modules is perfect for getting things out of the way temporarily, and then you can always bring them back later when you're done editing. It's very important to understand that every module has a power button, as you can see, but not every module has a bypass button. Only modules that have both input and output pins, like this scale module here, have a bypass button. Modules that have no input pins, like the waveform and image modules, or no output pins, like the magic module, have no bypass buttons, simply because there's nothing to bypass to. And that's it for disabling modules. Try playing around with it on your own computer, and I'm sure you'll pick it up pretty easily. The very last thing I want to cover is this little button here. All it does is minimize the module so it takes up less space. It doesn't affect the way the module functions at all, and it doesn't change the output. It's just there in case your project starts to get crowded, and you need to make more space. To bring the module back to normal size, just click the button again. And that ends our tutorial for now. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of connectors, pins, parameters, disabling, and minimizing. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get notified when we post our next tutorial about linking, which is one of the most important concepts in Magic. In the meantime, if you have any questions, remember to visit us on our forums. We really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much.